what's your opinion on using dextrose uh, pre post workout to support high intensity training done in a daily base? Um, I'm not really into dextrose, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jonathan um, uses that sort of stuff either. No, I mean, when I've used that before, it just gave me a stomach ache. That's when I was on a non ancestrally appropriate, species yeah. specific sort of diet. Um, I didn't notice benefit from it. I just got gut distress. My training was no better for it. Um, I think if you're fat adapted, you're not going to benefit from it. Um, some people say, you know, if you, it sort of alleviates some of the problems some people have with the gluconeogenesis pathway. But I think if you're fat adapted and you just give it time, it's going to happen a lot quicker rather than just trying to find ways to slow that process down. So I think just eat, you know, eat a proper diet, mm. really. Mm. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. It's, uh, you know, stick to eating species appropriate and uh, and sort of once you, you do carnivore diet and you become fat adapted and you your body relies more and more on um, fat it still will use glucose muscles still use gl glycogen mm. but there's also a translocation that happens of your fat stores inside the muscles closer to the filaments where those contractile events take place you know and so and contribute then far more to that creatine cycle that happens as well so that's really, and they can actually support um, those, you know, the restoration of glycogen stores as well. So it's, uh, but that happens, it's an adaption. It happens over a certain length of time. How do we know this? Well, they did, Steve Finney and um, Jeff Volter, Volker did a lot of studies doing this. They had two low carb um, academics, um, you know. Steve Finney now is retired. Um, he's not in Jeff Falk. Uh, he's still in academia. And they used to do used to use a number of athletes and they would biopsy them every hour or sometimes even half hour. And they would make sure that, uh, and that's how they were able to determine all these sort of uh, effects that were happening inside the muscle cells. So, and we're able to demonstrate that once you become fat adapted, those transition problems go away completely. So you don't need this sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, and it, it does, yeah, Alien Drone just put it there. Yeah, Dr. Stephen Finney and Dr. Jeff Volker. Volick, Volick, that's it, Volick. Thank you. Always mispronounce his name. You know, so. Yeah, they're definitely the the doctors that actually did a lot of the research in in that area. So I mean, yeah, and you don't need this sort of as um, I, as Jonathan said, it's really bad for your stomach. That sort of stuff, these alcohol, sugars, and stuff like that, they're just really bad. Um, people use these sort of um, things. Uh, I'm. I don't know what other what other alcohol or other sugars are, are people using out there like um, nowadays. Or is this the um, is this the, the key popular one? Uh, this one, malt dextrin. There's one called Holly Branch Cyclic Dextrin. Uh, it's meant to be like a very simplified sugar, basically. People use that. Okay. And they use that in massive amounts in your workout. Like as they're doing the workout, they might use fifty to hundred grams. Shit, really that so high? Your body won't even burn through that much in well, oxalis that much in that amount of time anyway. <laughs> God, <laughs> I mean, you don't need mm. any gluconeogenesis if you're doing that amount. <laughs> oh, that's just massive. Yeah. That's just a bloody hell. No, I would say, um, Yorgos, I would say no. <laughs> I would not basically do um, any of that sort of stuff. You don't need it. Uh, and long term, you're going to cause you, you end up causing yourself health problems. And a lot of these um, alcohol sugars, sugars, um, uh, starch based sugars, because there are starch based sugars as well that they've created 
in labs. Um, there's uh, sort of uh, uh, some sort of lactate type products as well that they've created. A lot of these sort of things, they tend to be very high in deuterium as well. So even from an energy um, point of view, that's going to cause some level of deuterium, some sort of mitochondrial damage in the long run, especially if consumed in higher amounts. You know, anything that's energy and it's got high deuterium, it's basically a recipe for mitochondrial harm in the long run. A lot of young people consume a lot of carbohydrates. They still can heal fast. They've still got high, high mitochondrial density, but as they, as they get older and older, that density drops and drops and drops. And then they suffer more health problems. So we want to maintain mitochondrial density into old age as much as possible because that will guarantee better healing and just better functioning into old age. Because once you damage your mitochondria, it's a hell of a lot harder to, to repair them, I can tell you. That's what I'm trying so, to tell people that um, they think, oh, I've got a standard, typical sort of diet, I'm fine. It's like, yeah, you might be fine for now, but give it five, ten years down the line or whatever amount. You might be fine for 20 years, but you get a point where your health will suffer for it. Yeah, you'll, you'll suffer severely and you'll pay for it um, long term. And it's, yeah not an easy thing to to reverse once you've done that damage 